not something that Carolina's worked really hard on is, is her fitness and, and being able to accentuate her game. She's a very physical type player. She hits a heavy ball, especially off the forehand side and with the serve. So she's going to be looking to dictate a lot with her forehand and just let her heavy ball do the work. It is amazing, isn't it, Coco, what playing well in one week and the right week can do for you. Because, not to say she wouldn't have been a top 50 player at some point, but she goes to a 1,000 event, which, as you said to me earlier on, was a little weaker for a 1,000, makes the final, and the amount of points you accumulate suddenly takes 60 places out of your ranking. Incredible. Yeah, it's it's career changing. It's it's something that you look forward to in your career is breaking top hundred, making it top fifty in the world. It makes a huge difference of how you plan your year coming into twenty twenty four. Gotta remember that she broke the top two hundred. If you look at her ranking seven years ago for the very first time. That's a long period where you are within that 100 to 200 range. Played a lot of doubles, as we know. Yeah, what people don't see about that 100, 200, 300 range is you can get lost there, and especially as a touted, you know, player that has the game to be able to break top 100, break top 50, and who knows what else she can do. To be stuck in those challenger tours can be really disheartening. That's some nice coverage. And we've been afraid to come forwards. And an early hold. Best athlete in the women's game right now, Coco, for your money? I would say so. I mean, the type of athlete that she is is very different from the Iga of the of the world or, or any of the other famed athletes, and even very different from a great athlete as Serena Williams. It's just the way she moves is a bit lighter around the court. She doesn't really have the, the boom pow that Serena had when she moved and, and the physicality of it all. But it's, it's great to see that she's kind of relies on that as her plan B in her game. Some of her movement in the US Open final last year was extraordinary against Sabalenka. Of course, came from a set down on three occasions as well in New York last year. Showed plenty of grit. Comes from a big sporting family. There's Caroline. As you were reminding me earlier on, a couple of sisters that played the game, a brother that's in golf, you were telling me. These are really comfortable rallies for Coco, going in that 20-plus shot range, even going in the 10-plus shot range. That's where she really thrives and really shows her athleticism, that she can create these winners out of just simple 
almost offensive balls. And Look of frustration. Um, the body language of Dollarhide because she has gone down early here. Yeah, that's something you don't want to feel when you're coming out as, as the lower ranked player, losing your serve early and getting down. It, it really feels like you're in such a big hole. Even though it's just the one break, Coco has not consolidated it yet. Caro definitely feeds off her serve, feeds off the rhythm of it, feeds off of building that lead in her service games. Yeah, no Brad Gilbert right now in the golf corner. He's been suffering with some illness in the last few days. So he's resting up in his room. talked so much didn't he in that period in the summer when he was helping out of, of, of making Coco win when she wasn't playing well of course we know Brad's book that's been well told but one thing he wanted to instill in there was to, to find a way to win when you're not playing your best tennis and that's what she was able to do A difficult school to learn. I, I think you have it or you don't. I, I think you either have the will to win and the and the desire and the competitive fire in your belly already. It's it's how you get it out onto the court makes a champion versus a regular player that competes on the on the tours. That serves in good work in order so far. And she has forged a three-love lead here very quickly indeed. Let's take a look at that point. That uh, was the penultimate point, I think, of the second game. 30-all point it was. Yeah, this was a great rally. Both players just getting their, their feet in, not really moving too crazy, but it was just testing each other's shots out. And that's what you want to do early on in a game in a set is just see okay are there are they tight are they nervous at all or are they hitting their shots hitting through the ball and coco doing a good job of mixing up paces moving carol a lot around not hitting too many balls to the same area and carol is a taller player she is one of those players that is physical can move well but isn't going to last long in the side to side rallies Promising start from the world number four. And there's the numbers in terms of how often she is able to execute, having got herself in front. Lucky. 
Had a lot of doubles with Storm Hunter, did she? Had a lot of success with Storm. How much of a benefit, Jill, is that when you're winning a lot of doubles matches as well? You're deep in majors. You're obviously in the second week. Does your confidence? Does that impact on the singles as well? Yeah, in my opinion, I think absolutely. I think it helps so many parts of your game, not only your return, but feeling more comfortable transitioning forward and also just getting more matches under your belt. I mean, the more matches that you play and deal with that pressure and tension and come through and win, the more confidence it makes you, it makes you feel. Oh. felt that when you were playing doubles it got you out onto these bigger courts sooner than maybe your tennis career in singles got you out there and that's why I always enjoyed playing doubles especially early on in my career I played almost every week just to get that experience see these players that maybe I never got to practice with or, or never got to play against quite yet He's down in Florida. Here's Caroline. Yeah, that's her coach, Jorge Tadero. He used to be at the USTA for a number of years and now has started his own academy nearby Orlando. What's changed in this service motion? Coco, we were having a little look at it, won't we, earlier on? Just a couple of slow-mos. There has been a little bit of a shift from your perspective. Yeah, it's, it's been abbreviated, but what I like about the abbreviation, it's gotten her shoulder more parallel, more up by her elbow is getting up better. Before, her elbow was down in her pocket. And it's hard to get any pace, any generation of, of consistency when your elbow is down at your pocket. It turns into a shot put type of serve instead of more of a throwing motion, which everyone strives for. And sometimes you can make a serve r look really complicated. I always found a serve pretty easy. You can overcomplicate things in tennis for sure. Yeah, if you look back to the motion of the US Open, the start was a lot lower as well. Her racket was a lot lower at the start of the swing. Now she tends to start, if you see here, where the racket face is and where it goes from here, it stays a little higher up. Yeah, and I think Coco's going to be working on her serve more and more as the years go on. I don't think this is going to be the final product. It's, it's too new. You've got to find nuances that you like and don't like about this new motion, whether you want to get the ball underneath it, what it does to your toss. There's a lot of different things that as a player you have preference to. Finding too many firsts in this game though, and Dolo Hyde is building some pressure. And that's what got Coco into a lot of trouble in that first round match. She wasn't getting a lot of first serves in, and it wasn't that she wasn't able to get that next ball back. It was just getting her on the defensive, being defensive minded, that can really change how you play a game.
Let person service. Opportunity. I feel that she should have made her at least play a volley. Yeah, you always have to, even though Coco is an accomplished doubles player, you always have to make your opponent volley at, as, at all costs. You never know how nerves might affect their, their volley technique or, or their thought process. So you've got to keep making them play. Attack that nicely. Oh, it's a fairly low hanging fruit in truth, but it's Goff that dispatches it. Goff needs four games to one. She just looks so comfortable when she comes in, doesn't she? Yeah, she, she closes so well when she comes to the net. But this is a great example here of, of just how low she stays on the ball. It's so much easier to get pace and power when she is this low to the court, being able to transfer her weight inside the court, not falling back too much. When she gets into trouble, especially on the forehand side, her weight falls back off of the court, and that causes miss hits and the ball to keep falling shorter and shorter. So some work to do for Caroline Dollarhide right now. Originally from Illinois. Now, as we said, based down in Florida. Never gone beyond the second round of a major. So looking to break new ground here. In singles, that is. Caroline's just getting caught moving late to her forehand side. She's so worried about protecting that backhand and running around it to hide it that she's leaving the forehand side just a bit too open and not quite getting there with her feet quite yet. And she does get a hold of it, though. You can see how penetrating it can be. Yeah, she's been very good when she's had time on the ball because she loads that back leg on the forehand so well to get that power. But overall, I feel like her normal rally ball needs to have a little bit more depth. Quite a few of her shots are landing just on the service line or just past the service line, so relatively too short. Is there a sense of just over-pressing at the moment? 
kind of feels like just trying to push a little too early in some of these rallies. I, you're always going to feel like that when you're playing a top seed. You want to show them your best game. You want to definitely make an impact out there. But Carol isn't really moving to the ball properly to be able to put that extra effort that she needs to be able to get the depth that Jill wants to see out of her. In order to be able to get depth on Don't the ball, you? you have to have a good base. And if your feet aren't moving, you're not getting those little steps out there to make sure that your footwork's perfect because it's certainly not going to be perfect when you are nervous. And there's for sure a million percent chance that Caro is, is nervous out there. Every player is. I always thought if I wasn't nervous, something was wrong. So once she starts getting those little steps and starts feeling more and more comfortable with Coco's ball, the court, the moment, the situation, she'll find that range. <gasps> And so important for Caroline because her ball is that heavy to not go too many shots to the same corner. I, I notice she's picking on Coco's forehand, which is the right play, but you have to keep her guessing. Keep her honest to the backhand side. Don't let her anticipate that every ball's going there. Look like physically at the end of a long exchange. Just look for the exit route, yes. perhaps a little quicker than it might have been. And that, that's going to be no normal throughout this match that Caroline's going to be wanting to hit the winner, finish the point a lot quicker out there. She's not going to want to be in these 10, 15, 20 shot rallies too consistently because as a bigger hitter, you want to have these points on the three, four, even eight ball mark, you don't want a, a ball a ball to go much more over that. Jill, how much does someone like Coco, who moves as well as she does, squeeze the space on you? How does, how does that kind of impact things as well? Because you know she's such a great athlete. Yeah, it is. I mean, you do. It, it's in the back of your mind the entire time, and it puts pressure on you to always try and go for a little bit more. It's, it's just going to be so tough, but you have to be willing to hang in there over and over again, be willing to play those long points. Under pressure, and she's able to hang on. And, and Nick, I think you mentioned it in the first couple of games that there were a couple of times that Caroline did press a little bit, and that's what she makes you feel like. You feel like you have to put a little bit extra on, but that was a much better game. I felt like Caroline looked a little bit more settled, and again, better depth throughout those rallies as well from her. Yeah, look at the numbers in the bottom right of your screen there. That's how big she's hitting it today 126 Ks. And if I've just been told by the team that that's well up there inside the top 50, that's a lot of pace coming off her forehand wing today. Thank you, love. Maddie Keys, I've just been told, at 124 Ks last season had the highest average forehand speed. So that's some context for you.
by the sink. He's not here this year, is she? No, no, she's she's injured. She's having a bit of a, a problem with her shoulder, which has kind of been the case as her career has now progressed. I mean, when you are hitting a forehand that big or serving as big as, as Maddie Keys does, it definitely has some wear and tear on the body. Attack came early and we're taking the second serve on. Oh, this is what, what Caroline wants to be doing each and every time she sees a, a second serve on the ad side. She wants to move and find that forehand and it, just send the message to Coco that if you keep giving me this second serve, I'm going to be thumping it for a winner or unreturnable. Let. So if you keep doing that throughout a match, it just pays dividends. You, you get a couple double faults here and there, a couple loose points. Fourteen. That's it. I actually liked that type of ball that Caroline was just going for, though. It was a little bit higher, heavier spin, and you, you guys were mentioning the speed of Coco. She's not going to be phased by that flatter shot. I think Dolahai needs to go for that more heavier spin that she's so capable of. One of her biggest assets, in my opinion. serve the Coco Goffs and some challenges as that forehand that we know is definitely the weaker wing. That's Pacey, 192 Ks, and had something on it. Yeah, Coco has really beefed up her serve in, in the, from last year, and you can just see how she looks physically. She doesn't look like that young kid anymore. She looks, you know, fitter. She looks stronger than ever. He was averaging at the U.S. Open last year 173, so that's a huge increase, that particular strike. Again, this is the forehand that I've been talking about, that she can find it from anywhere. And just the depth and penetration of it, it's so heavy and hard to control and ready to go for that short ball. I want this one. And that's how yes. that forehand has paid dividends in the Coco Golf serve. It, it creates a double fault because as a server, 
after your second serve has been thumped a couple times, now you're thinking, I gotta go for more. I gotta make sure I get ready for that next ball. And you don't really quite finish that serve completely. Yeah, second serve points one, just three from 10. said about that the better inexplicable <laughs> and it's put her in a position of peril here And very much back in business here. Boy, it did look a bit shaky there, didn't it? There were a couple where it was just a bit short. Just picking away at it. Yeah, as much as you work on a shot, it just it never goes away. The the anxiety of it's not your better wing, you're not as comfortable hitting it, and there's always going to be certain shots that you like more or like less but that's something that every player now knows about Coco and it was it was always out there but thanks to Cannon it was really shown it was really put on display of how much it broke down how much she really wasn't comfortable behind the forehand wing on a surface that you know we thought she might have great success after beating venus williams coming through qualifying Time. so it's always going to be out there it's always going to be in the back of her head so break a piece out here on the margaret court arena which is i can tell you of began on the outside courts after a delay of some three or four hours today. Some kick serve, and of course, with the new balls in play here, it's going to add a little bit of bounce. It's the bounce, Jill. It's affecting her a little bit down there onto that forearm wing because it seems as though it's getting up pretty high on her. It is, yeah. It's definitely more lively with the new balls for sure. And it just got a little bit hotter with the sun beating down on the court, which is going to make it go even quicker. You see Coco Goff has taken a couple steps back on that first serve. Caro has more of a kick serve. It, it, if you're not going to challenge it, taking it 
inside the court, you have to go back and wait for it to come down. And right now, that's where Coco's decided to position herself. That's a confident strike. And a big one as well. And look at that in terms of the 4M winners. Four games on. Well in front. You can see how well Caroline has changed her tactics out here. In the beginning, she was really just solely focused on picking on Coco's forehand. And that wasn't enough. It wasn't moving her. It wasn't keeping her off balance. Where Coco Goff's forehand really breaks down is when she is off balance and moving into it. Thirty eleven. Forty eleven. Disappointed there because a good look at the return, just maybe feeling a little wider and feeling as though because of that she had to go for a bit more. That's a very clean game and a swift one as well. As Goff finds her way back into the lead here in this opening set. Time. Inside the world's top four in both singles and doubles is Coco Goff, as we know. She's currently number three in the world in doubles. Only two players above her, Storm Hunter and Elise Merton. They're currently occupying the top two spots in the doubles rankings. Storm Hunter had a nice win in singles here a couple of days ago. I think is out there right now, isn't she, Coco? Yeah, she's she's up a set against Laura Sigmund, who's always a tricky one. Mm -hmm. Definitely brings the emotion, the fire, gets under your skin. Caroline was let off the hook a little bit on that point. She had Caroline push back all the way to the Melbourne sign, and when she stepped in to hit that backhand, just kind of covered it a little bit too much, driving it into the net. Top in a rally that was all about endurance. Yeah, the, earlier in the match, she was 
losing those longer points. And now you can see the momentum has changed. She's not getting pushed around as much by Coco from the baseline, especially in those longer rallies. And so much of her game around the serve and the plus one forehand. Five against all. She's almost at 70% today in terms of getting that forehand into play off that first shot. And that's crucial for a Coco. Yes. And I mean, we, we saw someone like Berrettini do that as well, where you couldn't even find his backhand at one point in, in his career. And Caroline it definitely makes you feel like that. But it's due to her serve. She sets it up so well. She gives herself a lot of time with the kick serve to be able to find the forehand. About 15. I think if Caroline can, can keep this up and keep penetrating with her forehand going and mixing up her shots, a couple to the backhand, a couple to Coco's forehand, sh you could see an upset here. Let. First service. Watching more of these rallies, Jill. That's just some really smart playing these first couple of points because she's no, using the slice exceptionally well. That going to the forehand side of Coco and Coco has been struggling to really get pace on that shot. She's hitting up on the ball and just doesn't have enough on it. It's allowing Caroline to take control on the forehand side. Come on. Come on. Fifteen, fault. Well, double fault number two. As could have some pretty dire consequences as in the case of this overall set. I'm looking anxious. who has found a way to turn this set around and will try and serve it out here at 6-5. Well, you've got to hand it to her. She has found the formula here at the moment. No, she really has. She, she's amped up the intensity. She's playing fearless. And that's one thing that was the knock on Caroline for a long period of time was just the nerves would get to her. She wasn't confident in herself. She wasn't confident enough in her game. And, and she really just played herself out of matches. She, she felt like she had to do so much more than what she really did. And her rally ball is enough. And when you are a big hitter, it takes some time, some, some maturation to realize that, you know, my rally ball is bigger than most everyday top 100 WTA players. How many times can I make it? And that's what Caroline had to figure out as she matured and, and grew into her game here on the WTA Tour. Had a fairly comfortable win in round one. Did Caroline Dollar Hyde beating Leo Lila Jean Jean from France 
in straight sets. Looking to take the first here. How does Goff find a way to get it to the back end a bit more consistently here, Coco? Because it feels as like so much of the match has been played on Dollar Hyde's terms at the moment. Well, the only way to get it over to the back end is you have to challenge the forehand to forehand cross court rally. You can't just keep trying to pressure into the back end because it's not working at the moment. You have to pull her out wide to her right. Find the forehand, open up the backhand side, and drive into it. Jill was talking about the average contact point, and these numbers will emphasize that. You can see there, when she has gone to the slice, a lot to the forehand wing. You can see how much lower Goff is making contact with the ball, which is making it difficult. This is what make, makes Coco Goff so good. She is calm under pressure. She's she's returning to stay in a match against someone who has been serving very well throughout. And she knows that Caroline, this is her first moment to try and get that set under her belt because she hasn't done it in the past meeting. And as a top player, you want to give your opponent a chance to feel the moment, feel the pressure, because sometimes when your game's not firing and your their game is absolutely just abs ripping you apart, you have to make them feel something else that's going on. You have to distract them a little bit to realize the moment that they're under. It wasn't the best return she's ever hit, but she gets away with it. And as a result, Six it will be a breaker to settle the pair. Ekhoff went a lot higher with those, all those forehand returns, got a lot more height over the net, not necessarily have more pace on it, but just made it a little bit tougher for Dolhai to attack and hit the ball in the sweet spot. Breaks last season was a very impressive eight and one on the year. One zero. Go. It's so hard to keep the belief when you are the underdog in these matches where you had the opportunity to serve for the set. And now you're stuck in a battle for a tie break to still have an opportunity to snag this set. And Caroline just losing that belief a little too quickly at the moment. And as a young player, and as a player trying to get through on. this next step in, in her career, you have to realize that your game is good enough. You don't have to do much more out there to beat even a top 10 player at any given moment. Oh. That's a perfect example right there. Caroline just pressing Two, a bit too much. She's. Un, in an uncomfortable position, she never really recovered 
back to the baseline. So she was rushed a lot more on that backhand side than she was expecting to. This is a great moment to just take your time, go to the towel, take a couple breaths and just be like, okay, let's, let's get refocused. Let's get a bit more relaxed out here. Body served nicely. Just couldn't really get out of the way of this one. Elicited a short reply. to rebuild a bit of belief in that shot. Hole one. Go. And you can see it all through this tiebreaker, she's been able to find Caroline's back in a lot more. And that's that's really due to Caroline being nervous, being passive, just happy to go to the slice, go to the chip a little bit too quickly. Unlike all through the set where she was happy to start driving the ball. Being in a position of such promise, Five, one, go. things are rather slipping away from her here drastically. Again, utilizing that slice, got the forehand into play. Six, one, go. The execution, though, lacking. <clears throat> Goff with a handful of set points. Dolahai just absolutely sat on this backhand side, just read Coco a little bit like like a book, as we would say. without its challenges but the US Open champion is on our way to round three seven games seven games it might feel stupid even for people at home to keep it up as long as you, as long as you do it's like a golf swing someone telling you keep your head down it's like oh I feel like such a moron doing this but it really makes a difference if you love and vice versa, Car Caroline really stays up and tall into her serve. She really gets her legs involved into every serve that she hits. There's no passiveness about how she goes about hitting a serve.
let first service. He's playing doubles here is Caroline with Peyton Stearns. They've got some first round action the next day or two. Could be quite the partnership, those two. Peyton losing to Kazakina yesterday. First game. In her first round. Another young American that has got a lot of promise, isn't she? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of them. Uh, Peyton having a di different road to becoming a professional tennis player, going going to college, playing for the Texas Longhorns, and actually winning a national championship. And it just shows that tennis has, has evolved as a sport. When I first came out on tour, you had to be a professional by 16 and winning Grand Slams by 18. And otherwise, you're a has-been. Now there's, there's many different avenues you can take to get to the big stage of the Grand Slams. had the wrong grip didn't she on the short ball look like she could just go through her here it's this one it's got stuck with the chopper grip so couldn't really hit through it Too good for that shot and really setting it up so well with that slice backhand. It's really been a game changer for her. Caroline slicing this ball, Coco lifting the ball just enough and going back behind. from Coco Goff. Right, showing amazing foot speed and to have Holding the wherewithal 15. to be able to hit this angle cross court is so hard to do to have that kind of touch. Caroline Dollarhide play this way that she could have got stuck between 100 and 200 for so long because the quality that she has is there for all to see. This was that point that we saw a moment or two ago. 
What are we calling that back end overhead? Are we going to name it something? It's mm, a good question. Jill, you have any ideas? Uh, I can think about it for a little bit. <laughs> All I can think about going over now is a backhand behind you smash. It's kind of long winded. BHS? Yeah. Oh. One thing I do know is it's a difficult shot to execute. Yeah, Pat Cash used to make me practice that to monotony, and I thought, that's kind of crazy. When am I ever going to intentionally hit this? Mm. It does come in handy. Yeah, how is Pat here this week, I think, isn't he? Yeah, I've seen him a time or two. He's he's helping out Kayla Day, another American. Uh, unfortunately, Kayla lost in the first round. Him and his son Jet are, are trading off duties with Kayla. there. run here two finals 87 and 89 cash made the final he's really upset with his bust out in the the player garden he says it's not a, it's not a nice replica okay yeah, didn't lost. give the mullet enough credit okay no. yeah lost to edberg didn't he five sets in that final back in 87 did cash also lost in five sets a year later, of course, to Mats Villander. Does he still have a stash of the checkered headband? Oh, oh. yes. Okay. There's lots. Okay. There are lots. He has a checkered patch on his shirt all the time. Does he? Yeah. Good knowledge, Jill. He's got, a, <laughs> he's got a trademark it at this point. Yeah. Oh, how's that dropped in? Yes. And from up here, it looked it looked like it was had no chance of going in. Bit of a miss hit from Coco, but. Nope. Better, better lucky than good sometimes. Committing here, Caroline. She's doing so well still right, penetrating with her forehand, but it's it's due to Coco's speed that she's a little bit stuck in limbo of do I come in, do I not? She's not going to the slice, so it's not obvious. But it's better to commit one way or the other than to get stuck in no man's land. touch and that's the benefit of having a forehand as big yes. as dollar height isn't it jill that you just force your opponent into some deeper positions and it opens up some space
sensational. Looked as though she might be in some trouble. But she has pulled a volley out of nowhere. Uh, this is all the doubles that she has played. It makes you so comfortable, even in these ridiculous volleys that you have to pick up off of her shoelaces. But it's great that she keeps her racket head out in front and lets her momentum do all the work. Contest this. It feels like a crucial stage for Dollar Height. Stay in front. Played so well throughout. Again. We haven't seen this play all match long. Uh, Caroline serving and volleying, but doing such a great job of getting back for this overhead. It's not easy to do when you're coming forward into the net and all your momentum's moving you forward to be able to stop on a dime and cut back. Great athleticism from Carol. Yes. This is really impressive. A match that doesn't have a whole lot in it in truth, despite the ranking golf. And Dollar Hyde edges ahead again in the second. Dollar Hyde leads two games to one. Let's have a look at one of the many quality points that these two have played out. <laughs> now, this has been, just been great tennis so far this match. And, and Coco Goff doing a really good job of keeping Caroline back deep in this second mm. set, where in the first set, Caroline was Fine. really dictating with her forehand, staying up close to the baseline. And it's a great tactical change by Coco Goff. Fifth main draw appearance here in Melbourne for Coco Goff, despite the fact she's only 19 years of age. That's fairly frightening in itself, isn't it? <laughs> You're making me sound old every time I hear that she's only 19 and been here five times already. Remarkable. Mr. Ostapenko last year in the last 16. Kenin, it was that beat her in... 2020. That was the last American to win here, of course, with Sophia Kennan. Beaten 
yesterday by Iga Sviontek in a high quality match. Coco really has to change her serve placement on this ad side. She's been getting killed a bit by Caroline's forehand, the way she moves around. And in order to stop that, you have to, if you're not going to make a lot of first serves, you have to really go after that second serve to the forehand of Caroline. Get it closer to the tee. It's a comfortable game. Two games on. For the Floridian. Well, we've had a look at this a few times already today, but worth once again just digging a little deeper into the <coughs> mechanics of it all. Left arm is just something that is standing out so much to me, how she's just ripping it down into her pocket. It's hard to time. He's playing doubles here as well with Jess Pagula. They're the top seeds. They take on the French pair, Burrell and Parry, in their opener. Caroline's got to be careful in this game. She's she's getting a bit loose. I mean, to fight back constantly from being love 30 down will start to wear on her. She needs to go back and, and play with a bit of patience, play with a bit of margin here. the break it was a good counter another good chase and the wild number four now has improved her position set in the break
time. Could be another American to face the winner of this one, Alicia Parks. Good year last year for her, Coco. Yeah, that was the first first year she broke into the top hundred. Big serve, big hitter. It's it's definitely a managing that because she can hit it so big, but she does really doesn't shy away from that game. Makes a lot of unforced errors. Yeah, she's currently out there. It's Layla Fernandez, so still to be decided, but in good position right now. I mean, this is the first match you've really seen Coco be very dejected, kind of giving herself a thigh slap, looking over to the box when she is missing the forehand. So you, she's obviously feeling the pressure of how many misses have come from that wing. That second serve was short and there wasn't a whole lot on it. Second serve points one has been a fraction disappointing today. Eight of 21. Two doubles in that total. This is a great exchange from both these ladies. It's, it's been such a physical match, and it's been impressive to see Caroline match Coco in the physicality department and the athleticism department. So much of what we talk about with Coco Goff is how great her athleticism is. Okay. In the fourth, those sorts of opportunities not be taken up. Had a look at the forehand, but didn't make it count. Goff consolidates the break. To move a step closer here to the third round. Yeah, there's still a lot to be worked on in the Coco Goff game, which is so great because we see her already be a top, top five player and also a Grand Slam champion, but there's still so much to improve, which only means that the sky's the limit. She can really reach new heights. Oh. 
Low 15. Caroline cannot go down a double break here. If she goes down a double break, she, she might as well kiss any opportunity of winning this match goodbye. I'm not really liking this drop shot play by Caroline. Coco's just a bit too quick, and it really just shows that Caroline has lost the confidence in how she was constructing the points in the first set and the second set, moving Coco side to side, not giving her too many balls to the same wing. And the drop shot always just screams, I've lost all my ideas. Mm. Love One thing she is certainly losing is her grip on this match. Because Goff now with opportunities for a double break. approach from the world number four still had some work to do though yeah just paused a little bit too long on this approach when you have someone pulled all the way past the doubles alley you have to move through your approaches not stop and hit it gives your opponent too much time to recover back into the court as far as this match goes from a competitive standpoint because the world number four has wrestled so control five, and will look yeah, to, to serve it out. <laughs> she has dropped the level a little bit, hasn't she, in the last 10 to 15 minutes? Yeah, and it's all confidence. She, she lost her confidence really quickly, and that's something that Caroline needs to work on going forward she needs to be able to be a strong confident player and okay i've lost the first set but it's not that big of a deal i can still work my way and maybe get this to a third yeah look at the difference here this is going to be a significant one this is coco goss plus one shot as we like to call it 61 percent on the backhand side so there you can see that just favoring that shot more often than not but if we switch it around and look at dollar hide it's a massive difference, Coco. Yes, and the, sh the shots are always inside the court for Caroline. Even though she is finding the forehand, she's not giving up a crazy amount of real estate Time. from the baseline. She's able to hold her ground well. Well, Caroline Dollarhide has come a very long way in the last six months. Breaking new ground in her career. Inside the top 50. All set to move up as well after winning our opener here, but the end of the road it would seem is nigh. going to come as a surprise to you guys because it's so sunny but it is misting a little bit down here amazingly enough but i think it's just light enough and hopefully we'll pass by pretty quickly jill what do you think of caroline's progress this year uh, obviously it was a big amazing. breakthrough 
Do, yeah. do you see? Do you see it progressing? I do. I've, I've always liked her game, even when she hadn't broken the top hundred yet. I always thought she has such capability. And I think also here during this match, seeing some good signs. These are the opportunities that she needs, the matches that she needs to learn more about herself. Obviously, it's not over yet, but I thought she was so close. I mean, the first set could have gone her way as well. And so I think that's a really big step forward also. an exceptional slice. The amount of movement and bite that she had off it. There's not too many players out there that can produce that. Met. In Fulton. So two chances to get one of the breaks back. Oh, what a good second that was. Yes. That's smooth. And again, close to 200 Ks. An increase in pace this week in further evidence. Caroline just saying, not quite yet, not quite, quite yet. She's fighting hard in this game. Yeah, that forehand has imposed itself a lot today. Not quite there, though. Bad one, Go.
gets it done in the end. But make no mistake, this has been a stern examination of the Coco Golf game today. It's been a good test. Match point for a third time. Just falling off that one a little. Advantage, gonna hide. Trying to find a way to fall over the finish line. But... Dollar hide with a chance to break back again. by Coco spinning it down to the toes of Caroline that's always yes. a great shot when you have your opponent coming into the net not trying to hit through them but making them hit this volley up it's really hard to time Four doubles. First set percentage has just dropped a little. Uh, this match looks as though it's coming to its conclusion. points well yes. Coco really needs to think out this next point that she's going to serve at deuce of where she's going with the first serve and what is she doing with that first ball just have a clear concise idea Coco Goff, it is the Buxer ticket to round Seven, three six, in six, Melbourne. Six. That was a fantastic contest for both players. A really tough first set. Caroline Belhide probably should have won that. Just let it slip away. She served for it. But that was a, a really hard-fought battle by Coco Goff, really working her way into this tournament. Yeah, full credit to Dollar Hyde. But in the end, just not quite able to keep the quality going. Goff sets up a meeting with Alicia Parks, another American in round three, coming through in two competitive sets.
for Dollar Hyde, another opportunity to play a big name, another win at a major, and that all oh, is valuable experience, Coco. Absolutely, and, and there's great, great moments to take away from this match. She, she had her chances in the first set. The more opportunities she gets in these moments, she'll be better at it, more calm, more concise of how she's going to play, serving out the set or in to the tiebreaker, but it's really positive from Caroline the way she came out and competed. Yeah, she's not far away on the evidence of today's tennis. And we will look forward to seeing more of her in the doubles, of course, this week as well. But for Goff, the Americans keep on coming in this section of the draw. You know, there are a fair few of them, but Alicia Parks will be a different sort of challenges. We look forward to seeing that one in a couple of days from now. She is hot property. And let's hear from her. Courtside, Joel Krabas will be asking the questions. Coco, congratulations. It's never easy playing a fellow American, and you know what dangerous opponent she can be. How crucial was you to get through that first set in particular? Yeah, it was uh, really hard. Um, I started off playing well, and then I think that service game, I didn't mix up my service. She was hitting a lot of big forehands. I played her before, and it was a tough match. And uh, she does well with hitting the ball heavy, so sometimes it's hard, to, it's hard to be on offensive. Sorry, this echo is, like, so trippy. What the hell? It's tough. <laughs> it's all right. It's tough. Um, and also, you mentioned to me after the first round, you were dealing with some nerves. Now getting through these first couple rounds, have those nerves settled a little bit for you? Yeah, I wasn't nervous today. Um, I think that I was just trying to play good tennis. And, you know, if you give her something short, she's going to punish you for it. So I think if I could go back, I would try to play deeper and more uh, heavy like I did in the second. And you also mentioned you look good, you feel good. How are you feeling after this win going into the third round once again? I mean, I think I still look good, so I feel good. <laughs> yeah, uh, shout out to New Balance for the kit. And I'm going to do a little self-promo. You can buy this at the New Balance store by Raw Labor. <laughs> Excellent. You heard it here from Coco, ladies and gentlemen. Coco Golf. You're going to get yourself some new gear for all your uh, weekend tennis matches coming up. As worn by one of the best out there. How do you evaluate what you saw from her today, Coco? Oh, this is a big improvement from her first round match. Yes, there are still some kinks to work out, but can't be perfect too early in a grand slam. You don't want to peak too soon, but it's going to be a work in progress for Coco. We've seen it a couple times. The shots break down, shots be successful. And it's going to be up to her and her team to be able to work out those kinks, be more confident out there when her forehand is breaking down or her serve is throwing in a couple too many airs and she's facing a lot of second serves. And her team needs to figure that out on the practice court to make Coco feel as comfortable as possible once the matches get tougher and tougher throughout this tournament. Numbers-wise, let's take a, a quick browse at uh, what we've just seen in an hour and 44 minutes. Anything jumping out here? Well, it's a first serve percentage. It really dropped it for Coco in the, in the second set, especially towards the end. And you can see how much damage it is that it really affects Coco's game. Only 38% off the 